Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the pre-market Pulse Scan Report. Right now, the time is 8.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is trading on Tuesday, November the 29th, 2016. So we're about an hour before the uh, Wall Street opening bell and focusing on the gold futures right now. Uh, you can note that the low so far this morning is 1183.10 with the market being down 10 bucks. Um, this is significant because I did warn and alert you to this yesterday in yesterday's pre-market poll scan. I warned you that ignore any kind of pop you saw in the market. Now we did have um, we did have some rally alerts yesterday in the gold space, even in the mining space. And I did warn you to watch that. Don't get excited. Don't get anxious. Don't just jump in the market, but use the pulse wave price triggers to stop you in trades and stop you out of them. Because it, it, by doing so, it disciplines you not to try to jump the gun or try to figure the market out because that's being greedy and then you're going to get spanked and get your face ripped off. So those of you that understand that discipline, you did not get caught and what's happening this morning right now all of those uh, suckers who went long yesterday are being stopped out right now they have to run for cover this is going to help push the market down even further the danger in today's market this morning and for gold is that it's in a negative pulse wave on both the daily and the weekly charts we're in danger of dropping bef below the Kumo cloud on the weekly chart and right now, the short term, uh, the shorter term trend line is dangerously close to crossing below the longer term trend line. Now, crossing below it on top of the Kumo cloud is a weak bear market. If those trend lines also drop below the Kumo cloud, it is the beginning of a all out bear market. All right. That's what you look for on a weekly chart. If that happens, then all bets are off. We're in a bear market in the metal space again. All right. So on the daily chart, though, we've been in a bear market because we've been below the Kumo cloud and we're in a negative pulse wave. So it's do or die. Now, can this price drop below the Kumo cloud on our close and then reverse and get back up higher again? Of course it can. That's why we watch it closely. That's why we don't try to predict. We just watch the price action and let the the market tell us what it's going to do. The algos right now are basically self-correcting mechanisms. That's the way they've been designed. So you have to keep that in mind. Just like what's happen, happening with the bond market. The bond market uh, rally was manufactured by the Fed buying bonds. Okay, So with the Fed continuing to have a long position, in the bond market that kept the price up but notice how now bonds have entered into a bear market and they can no longer sustain what they were doing so what does that do to the yields remember bond price and yield is inverted so the higher the bond price the lower the yield the lower the bond price the higher the yield when we say yield we mean interest rate remember when you're holding a bond the way to look at it is when you're holding a bond you get paid in one of two ways you get paid the in by the increase in uh, the face value of the price of the bond itself or the rising interest oh, I'm sorry the lowering of interest rates so let me use an example say I got a bond hundred thousand dollar bond and let's say that for whatever reason um, bond price at let's say 110 or whatever let's say that price represents the the bond being in a um, in a in a bear market, all right? How about that? Because let's say it came off a high of 150 or something. Okay, what happens is I got that now at, because um, it was in a bear market, that means that interest rate is, let's say the interest rate was 30%. Well, guess what? We're in a bear market, right? So that means those rates, those, those yields are going to continue to go up. So what happens is I'm being compensated for the plummeting price of the bond by giving me a higher yield, a higher interest rate. 
when the bond price is high in a bull market, then those yields are low. You don't need uh, to be compensated for holding the bond because the price of the bond is con continuing to increase. So that's the way that works. So you're holding a bond, you're getting paid either, you know, because of the rising price or you're getting paid because of the, the yield on it. So if you were to go and sell it back into the market, you would make your money in a bull market. You would make money off the price of it, not necessarily the yield because the yields are low and vice versa when the, the, the price of the bond is increasing and, and yields are really low, you're not making money off the yield, making money off the price. And when in, in the inverse relationship, when, uh, you know, when the yields are going higher, you're making money off the interest rate. So because your bond is more valuable because you have a higher interest rate on your bond than someone who has a lower interest rate. So that's the way those relationships work. So in other words, the, the program is broken down. They cannot keep the manufactured low rates the way they are right now because the, the bond prices are falling and it's an inverse relationship. Some things, some mechanisms cannot be manipulated. It's the nature of the actual bond instrument itself. The only thing you can do is, in, is manipulate the interest rates by keeping the price of the bond high. But when that starts to break down, then your yields start to go up, interest rates go up, nothing you can do about it. You cannot manipulate that. And right now, that's what's getting away. What Right now, the yields are starting to go up. The rates are starting to go up. Because why? The bond prices are plummeting. So that's what's happening. Eventually, that's what happens. The algos themselves self-correct. So right now, the algos are in the process of doing the same thing in gold. They won't be able to suppress the price of the gold much longer. They can do it for a long time where it seems like it's indefinite. But at some point, the algos will self-correct and, and you'll see that. So that's why I encourage you all, don't be greedy in these markets. You know, let the market stop you in and stop you out. Don't try to second guess and pick tops and bottoms because you'll be destroyed. You get your face ripped off. You don't want that. You don't want to blow your account up. So stick to the post wave price triggers. That's what they're there for. Will you always catch the beginning of a move? No. Will you always get out at the end of a move? No. It's designed so you can catch the lion's share of the move and be on the right side of the market. That's what the algos do. That's why the program self-correct. So that even if you're in a trade and you get stopped out, it gives you the opportunity to get placed on the right side of the market. That's what the stop reverse mechanisms are for. Are for. And that's also why we trade the way we do with the inverse ETFs and the long ETFs. So if we're long uh, JNUG and we get stopped out, of JNUG, we will be stopped into JDST. Get it? You get put on the right side of the market and vice versa. So stick to the system. Stick to the system and you will be fine. All right? So remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. See you in the trading room.